It was a glorious Sunday morning, and the townspeople, as people do in towns all over the world, gather for church. The children are there too, of course, but the children of this particular village always greet the sound of the church bells with an added sense of eager anticipation. Why this air of excitement among the youngest members of the congregation? Well, it's because they know that as soon as the service is over, they'll be hurrying to the meadow at the river's edge in order to hear another of old Samuel's delightful stories. I suppose you children think that all witches are bad, but they're not, as you see. Once upon a time, there were two witches, one very beautiful and one not so beautiful. These witches Pardon were me, sister... Samuel, but I think you've told us the story before. Dear me, have I really? Yes, you told it last month. We want to hear something new, Samuel. <laughs> well, I should think you would. Very well, I shall tell you about the wolf and the fox cub. One morning, a wolf came across a little fox cub who had been abandoned in the forest. He took Being him home kind to his wolf, den. Yeah. We have heard that one, too. You've run out of stories. No, my dear. I have a lot more of them. The only problem is finding one of them we haven't heard before. Wait a moment now. I'm certain you haven't heard this one. I knew you hadn't run out of stories, Samuel. Mm, it's really rather surprising. I didn't think of it before because it's one that should mean a lot to you. You see, it all took place right here in this very village. Right here. That's right, it's a true story. You children had no idea your village was so important, did you? Actually, it's not so much the village that's important as that cabbage field over there. You see it? What happened over there? Well, just listen and you'll find out. Do you all know what a hedgehog is? Yes. Yes. Then you know, a hedgehog is a curious combination of opposites, cute and cuddly on one side, and on the other, covered with nasty, prickly spines, uh, rather like a porcupine. And still, they seem to get along with each other. This particular hedgehog had a wife and son and a little house on the edge of the forest. Dear, if you're not in the middle of something else, would you mind taking Junior with you to dig up some supper from the human's vegetable garden? All right. Send the little fellow out. Wait, Pop, I'm coming. Pop, wait up! Wait up! Okay, son. Hey, stop running. You better slow down or... Or you might stumble. Okay. I got you. Well, hedgehogs are wonderful at walking and digging. They're rather bad at running. Their little legs just aren't made for it. But after all, no one does everything well, and sooner or later we all learn to live with our weaknesses. I'm awful slow and clumsy, aren't I? Now, Junior, what makes you say that? The fox's kid told me so. Did he now? He called me a stumble bump, too. I wouldn't let the fox boy's opinion worry me. He said that foxes were the fastest animals in these parts. Is that so? I'm not so sure about that. Dogs are pretty fast, not to mention deer. Hmm, he said there's no way anybody could ever beat a fox. Ah, there he's mistaken. It's happened at least once before. Somebody beat him? That's right. Who was it? It was a crab. A crab? You're kidding me, aren't you, Pop? No, not at all. That's kind of hard to believe. Crabs can't even move except by going sideways. That's the same mistake the fox made when he agreed to race him. Really? That's right. You see, a clever mind moves faster than even the quickest feet. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> you crabs make me laugh. I can never tell whether you're coming or going. How do you ever get anywhere? What's the point in making fun of me? I'm not making fun. I'm just saying you make me laugh, that's all. Hmm. Maybe you won't still be laughing after we race. Hold on, little fella. Let me get this straight. You're challenging me to a race? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> You've been out in the sun too long. I'm perfectly sane. Excuse me if I have my doubts about that. No more stalling. You accept the challenge? Okay, you're on. I've got a couple of minutes to kill anyway. Where's the finish line going to be? We better not make it too far away or you might never finish, little fella. Do you see that tall pine tree? Well, the first one there wins the race. How's that? All that way, huh? All right. Just to show you I'm a good sport, I'll give you a head start. Don't be ridiculous. I don't need any head start. Oh, boy. Cocky little crustacean, aren't you? Okay. I'm ready whenever you are, and don't say I didn't warn you. Runners on your marks. Get set. Go! <laughs> I don't need any head start. Imagine the nerve of that crab. Hey, he's probably still at the starting line getting his legs sorted out. Huh? What's he in such a hurry about? Wait a second. What am I doing? I'm racing against a crab, not a gazelle. Why kill myself? I might as well take it a little easier. 
<laughs> I wonder how far back he is. Huh? Just as I figured, I don't see him anywhere. <laughs> That's because you're not looking toward the finish line. Huh? I was beginning to get bored waiting for you. Oh. Did you stop somewhere for a bite to eat or something? It's impossible. You beat me here? <laughs> Seems I did. Oh. What's it feel like being beaten oh. by a shellfish? So you see, the foxes have been beaten at least once. That sure was a clever trick of the crabs. You bet it was. So the next time the fox's boy starts boasting about his quickness, you'll know just what to tell him. I'll challenge him to a race like the crab did. I don't think you'd be able to catch a ride on his tail without him noticing. I suppose not. But you're missing the point. A quick mind is the most important thing in the race of life. Right. <laughs> Look, son, that story passed the time so quickly that we've already come to our vegetable patch. And indeed they had. As the acres of cabbage and turnips stretched out before them, their mouths watered with anticipation. Of course, you might think the hedgehog was being a little presumptuous when he spoke of our vegetable patch, since it really belonged to the people of this village. Actually, there's plenty to share. There's more than enough to feed all of us and the animals of the forest as well. Ready, Junior? Now, heave! <clears throat> Mm. <laughs> Yummy! <laughs> really ripe and juicy. It's an excellent crop of turnips this year. The best ever! Let's go, son. We'd better find a nice one to take home to Mother before you and I eat them all. Right. Here we go. Uh. This one's a prize winner. Now dig down deep to free the roots. <laughs> All right, now, all together now. <laughs> Son, someone's coming this way. <laughs> Quiet now. A farm dog. A dog? It's okay, don't be frightened. He probably won't see us down here under the leaves. But just to be safe, you'd better roll yourself up into a tight little ball. Okay, I will. <laughs> Hurry. But what are you gonna do, Pop? You just curl yourself up, Junior. Come on now. Okay. Good. Cover your head up. That's right. Make yourself as small as you can and stick your spines out as far as they'll go. That's a good boy. Now stay just like that and don't move no matter what. Got to lead him away from Junior. Can run. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pop, is it okay to come out now? I know speed isn't everything, but I wish I was a little faster. And so the little hedgehog learned that while his kind may not be the fastest of animals, they do have a trick or two up their sleeves. What a terrifying experience. Yes! He had a huge mouth with big teeth. I was so frightened I couldn't stop myself from trembling. If your father hadn't been there to protect you, I can't imagine what might have happened to you. Don't worry about Junior. He handled himself like a wise old hedgehog. Well, all that matters is that both of you are safe. You should have seen him. He curled up just like a porcupine. <laughs> 
If anyone bothers him, they're in for a nasty surprise. I've always wondered what these prickly spines on her back were for. They make a neat weapon. They're not so much a weapon, son. They're just something Mother Nature gave us to help protect ourselves. You mean they're kind of Mother Nature's way of making up for the fact that she made us slow and clumsy, right? Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the idea. Well, I'm going out for a while, if you don't mind. Don't stray too far from home, Junior. I think I'll go and find the Fox's boy and give him a great big surprise. <gasps> no! Those spines of yours are to be used only in self-defense, never to attack someone. Okay, okay. These germs are scrumptious. That may be the last of them. That is, if that dog's going to keep hanging around the turnip patch. We don't mm. want to run into him again. Oh, they're so delicious. Well, there's always the cabbage patch. But, dear, the cabbage patch belongs to that Mr. Hare, doesn't it? Oh, now, who cares about old floppy ears? You sure we ought to? It'd sure make a change of pace. Ha! Huh, look at that! Row after row of leafy green goodies just waiting for me to come along and eat them. Oh, boy, what a life! Huh? You know, I'm not even sure what this cabbage stuff tastes like. Not bad. Not as good as turnips, but not bad. <laughs> now, what's a walking pincushion doing in my cabbage patch, I wonder? I don't know. There's something about these puny little guys that always makes me laugh. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Hare. Hi, Mr. Porcupine. How are you? I'm not a porcupine. I'm a hedgehog, and you should know the difference by now. Sorry, but I didn't mean anything by it. You can't blame a guy for an honest mistake. So tell me, what are you doing in my cabbage patch? Don't worry, I'm just out for a little stroll, that's all. Huh? So, out for a stroll, huh? I suppose that must be hard work for someone like you. What do you mean, for someone like me? Don't go taking it personal or anything. I only meant that with those stumpy little legs, getting around must be a chore. Ha! <laughs> Well, you've got pretty funny-looking legs yourself. Now, if you don't mind... They're engineered for speed, my friend. They just happen to be the fastest pair of legs around. <laughs> what do you think? Very nice, but I still think they look funny. <laughs> hey, what's your hurry, little guy? Not so fast. I'm having a hard time keeping up with you. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, you poor guy. You're built so close to the ground, you've probably caught yourself a chill. You should be more careful. <laughs> Why so edgy, Hedgy? Have I rubbed you the wrong way? Hmm? <laughs> hmm. Now, if you had a pair of real legs, you could have just hopped over that ditch instead of tumbling into it. All right, you asked for it, old floppy ears. Oh. We're not getting on your nerves, are we? I challenge you to a foot race! Ha 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 ha! I admire your spirit. But I can't say the same for your brains. You don't stand a chance, Shorty. <laughs> now you gotta be absolutely bats if you still wanna race me after that little demonstration. Mm, okay, so I'm bats. Yeah? Well, let's at least make it interesting. You got anything you're willing to bet on the outcome? Huh? Well, I guess. I suppose I could always put up my turnip patch. Fine. If I win, you give me your turnip patch. Wait a minute, what are you gonna bet? What's it matter? Can't lose. But what the heck, I'll put up this cabbage patch. You ready? <laughs> What's the big rush? Give me a minute. You wouldn't be trying huh? to wiggle out of it now, would you? Hmm? Hmm. Of course I'm not. It just so happens that I haven't had my lunch yet today and I'm very hungry. You can't expect a person to run a race on an empty stomach. Sure, eat something, you'll need it. And I've got all the time in the world. Huh. <sighs> See you after lunch. Pop! Hey, hmm? Pop! You should have seen what I just did. Boy, you would have been so proud of me, Pop. Oh, and why is that, Junior? Even though that fox boy made fun of me again, I didn't poke him with my prickly spines. Good, good. I remember what you said, and I... <sighs> Why the big sigh? You're not upset about something I did, are you, Pop? Oh, no, of course not, son. I'm very, very proud of you. <laughs> you know, you can tell me, Pop. Uh, Is something wrong, uh, huh? Uh, your mother's waiting for us, so let's hurry home for lunch, shall we? Mm-hmm. But if poor Mr. Hedgehog thought he would get some sympathy at home, he was sadly mistaken. What? 
You can't be serious. You really challenged him to a foot race? Gee, Pop, and after all that stuff you told me about not getting upset when people tease you? Well, it was a mistake. A mistake? That's putting it mildly. I know, I know. I just got so sick of that hair's boasting. I'm sure you did, but that's no excuse. Well, you'll have to eat, and lunch will be ready in a minute. <sighs> oh, come on, my stomach's spinning in circles. Oh, do you really think I could eat at a time like this? <laughs> if you're to have any chance of beating him, you'll need every bit of your strength. After all, my dear, stranger things have happened. Me beating the hare? What could be stranger than that? Well, how about a tortoise beating a hare? That seems pretty strange to me. But that sort of thing only happens in storybooks. The tortoise beat the hare? But he's such a... A slowpoke, right? I'll say he is. But he beat him, and it really happened a long, long time ago. As you can imagine, the hare got far out in front at the beginning of the race, so far that he thought he could afford to take a little nap. He was in for a rude surprise when he finally woke up. <laughs> You see, the tortoise just kept plodding along while the overconfident hare slept. And by the time the hare realized his mistake, it was far, far too late. There's more than one way to win a race, even when it looks hopeless. Yes, that's it. If I can't rely on my speed, I'll just have to come up with a clever plan to beat him. Do you have any particular clever plan in mind, dear? None whatsoever. I think maybe you ought to forget about the whole thing. No. Oh. I'm afraid you're just going to have to take your medicine. Now eat up your soup. You don't want to keep him waiting. What am I going to do? There's no way I can win this race, and if I don't, that awful hair gets our turnip patch. What a mess. You should have thought of that before you challenged him. <gasps> oh, you're a big help. I sure appreciate all the family support. Well, if I'm going to go through with this, I might as well get started. <clears throat> Wait a minute, dear. Huh? What? I think I've just thought of a plan. Catch! Huh? It's perfect. Leave it to me. Huh? Now here's what you do. Hmm. And what if this plan of yours doesn't work? We don't have anything to lose, do we? At least it's a plan. Sometimes you can be so pessimistic. Hmm. I can't believe he'd really fall for it. Of course he'll fall for it. Don't worry. Come on, have some backbone, will you? And so, urged onward, or should I say dragged onward by his determined wife, the little hedgehog went forward to face his moment of destiny in the cabbage patch. Hmm. Hmm. What's keeping him? Here I am. Huh? My wife made a bigger lunch than I expected. A last meal for the condemned man, huh? Oh, I don't know about that. You ready to lose your turnip patch? You just might lose yours. Hmm. <laughs> you got a great sense of humor for a little shrimp. Okay, now, for the race, I'll run down the center of this irrigation ditch. You keep to the center of that ditch over there, got it? What's the big deal? So we don't run over each other or anything. This way we keep it fair, okay? Sure, suit yourself. Now, the first one of us to the end of the field is the winner, all right? All righty. Ah, ah, ah. This guy's too spunky for my taste. You ready? Ready. On three. One, two, three. <laughs> Atta boy, you ought to reach the finish line by sometime next week. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo! Hmm? <laughs> oh boy, there's the finish line. I'm gonna win in the walk. Huh? What? Where have you been? I was beginning to think you got lost. Ah! I'm going back. Well, wait, I wasn't trying, because I thought you fell down back there. Let's go again. This time's for real. On three. One, two, three. Oh. This time there's no question. Huh? Well, at least you made it closer. Huh? Not fair. I insist that we do it again! Well, if you insist, we'll keep running it until you're completely convinced that everything's on the up and up, okay? Okay, count of three. One, two, three. <coughs> Little shrimp's not even breathing hard. <laughs> I won! Not quite, but you did commit a close second. Ah, this can't be happening. I demand a restart. One, two, three, go! <laughs> Poor 
before, Mr. Hare. <laughs> Where is he? You improved your time. <laughs> Give me another chance! The frantic hare refused to accept defeat. Seventy-three times he ran back and forth between the finish lines. Mr. Hedgehog was always there to greet him at one end and Mrs. Hedgehog at the other. You see, they looked so much alike that it never occurred to him they might not be one and the same. The hedgehogs had proved that a clever mind is worth more than a fast pair of legs, and it's said that to this day any animal thinks twice before challenging a hedgehog to a race. Did that only happen? Oh, yes, indeed. In fact, Mr. Hedgehog still lives nearby, a little older, a little wiser, and very, very happy. <laughs> so long! <laughs>